After calling genetic variants and obtaining a set of, for example, SNPs, the next step is to remove low quality data. The idea is that during DNA sequencing and bioinformatic processing, some degree of error occurs. So we need to identify and remove spurious SNPs. Otherwise, these artificial SNPs may create a misleading signal that affects downstream analysis. There are a number of SNPs characteristics that we can use to detect low quality and erroneous SNPs, including the amount of missing data for a given SNP and the frequency of the less common allele, also known as the minor allele frequency. Missing data refers to the proportion of genotypes that could not be called and therefore are flagged as missing. The inverse is the call rate, which is the proportion of genotypes that were called. In this table, we are representing a SNP dataset in which individuals are presented in rows and loci in columns, with called genotypes represented as letters. Missing data can be evaluated in two levels, locus level and individual level. The locus level means that there are regions in the genome that were poorly sequenced in many individuals. Loci in these regions are more likely to be wrong and erroneous. So in this example, the first locus has missing data equal to 0.25, which means that this locus is missing in a quarter of the individuals. The missing data in the second locus is zero, same in the third locus. In the fourth locus, missing data is 0.5, which means that this locus is missing in half of the individuals and so on. So if we set a filter to remove loci with missing data equal or greater than 0.33, a third of the individual, locus four will be removed. Now, the individual level means that there are individuals for which sequencing didn't work as well as for others. So they have a large proportion of their data missing. These individuals are therefore less informative. In our example, individual one has missing data zero, same for individual two. Individual three has missing data of 0 0.2 and individual four has missing data of 0 0.4. So if we set a threshold to remove individuals with the missing data equal or greater than 0 0.33, a third of the data, individual four will be removed. Common thresholds for these filters are, for loci level, 50% of missing data as the least stringent filter, because it would only remove loci with 50% or more missing data. Also 20%, 10%, and 5%, which is the most stringent because it will remove loci with as little as 5% missing data. And for individual level, 70% missing data, 50% and 20%. What about minor allele frequency? This filter removes loci whose minor allele, so the one that is the least common, has a frequency below a certain threshold. The rationale behind this filter is that an allele that occurs in an extremely low frequency in a data set is more likely to be a sequencing error. Therefore, it is best to remove that loci, that locus. In our example, the first locus has no minor allele frequency because it has only one allele. In the second locus, the minor allele is present only once. So the minor allele frequency is 0 0.17, as it is for locus three and so on. If we set the minor allele frequency threshold as less than or equal to 0 0.2, both locus two and three will be removed. Common thresholds of minor allele frequency are 1% minor allele frequency as the least stringent filter, because it would only consider minor alleles with frequency of 1% or less as rare enough to remove them. Also 3% and 5%, which is actually the most stringent filter because even loci with minor alleles with frequency as high as 5% would be removed. 
As you probably noticed, applying filters not only means removing low quality data, it also means that the resultant data set will be smaller. That's one of the reasons one has to be cautious when using filters. When more stringent thresholds are set, fewer loci are likely to pass the threshold and more loci will be removed from the data set, leaving a data set that is comparatively smaller. This is likely to impact downstream analysis. For example, analyses that are used to detect population structure, such as principal component analysis, tend to become less accurate with more stringent thresholds. This is true for both missing data and minor allele frequency filters. Here, for example, it is shown that when we allow SNPs to have only very little missing data, the populations appear more genetically similar, obstructing the assessment of population structure. The same occurs when we require minor allele frequencies to be higher. Ultimately, the thresholds used for different filters will depend on the data set itself and on the analysis that will be done downstream. There is a different set of loci that should be removed, not because they are low quality, but because many populations, genetic analysis assume autosomal loci. And if this assumption is violated, they can give wrong biological inference. When using genetic data for species with sex chromosomes, so for example, birds and mammals, we need to remove sex-linked loci. Sex-linked loci are those that are found in sex chromosomes and therefore behave differently in males versus females. This contrasts with autosomal loci, which behave roughly the same in both sexes. When we plot SNP call rate in males versus SNP call rate of females, autosomal SNPs fall here on approximately a one-to-one -one relationship. The same occurs when we plot the proportion of heterozygous males against the proportion of heterozygous females. So we can use this property to filter out sex-linked loci because they do not follow the same pattern. Removing anything that significantly deviates from the one-to-one -one relationship guarantees that the remaining SNPs are autosomal. Filtering sex-linked loci is critical because the presence of sex-linked loci can give wrong results. For example, they may indicate that one sex is more genetically diverse than the other when this is not true. They can also obscure real population structure by dividing the population by sex, and they can interfere with parentage analysis results. If you want to know more about sex link loci, you can watch the video in this link. Thank you to all those parties who have contributed to and continue to contribute to CSI.